Hello everyone, Kurt Hofer here, and welcome back to another episode from Hofer Labs. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on with dagger attack, attacks and assaults, and we're going to be looking at yet another action that we can utilize and take uh, against someone that is attacking us within uh, our bazaar. Uh, the purpose of this right here, again, understand that we are following down the mechanisms that we've talked before about taking away the dagger, striking them, breaking the, uh, break, uh, binding the arms, breaking the arms, and then throwing them to the ground. Um, this right here, I believe, is a continuation that speaks to the notion of what we've already been doing, and it, it allows us to gain access to something that is a continuation of the plays we have just been doing the entire time. Um, and it also ties back to the trip up, if you will, um, when, when you look at the uh, within the Arborzari section. So it, to me, it's one of those things that it has to happen very quick, or it happens with uh, with some other pretexts that we've done in there to set up so that we can take that kind of effect against an opponent. So with that being the case here, uh, let's get into it. So um, once again, I'm hanging out here with Vincent and we are gonna be continuing on with the concept of Abrazari and Dagger together and how we, it's continues in certain things. The, the, everything up into this point, again, is off of that first master cover, which is utilizing that post along in and finding some form of grip or grab into things, right? Uh, the one we are gonna be talking about today is essentially it's a throw. And I don't believe that it's meant to be just like, this is the only throw you do within the section. Um, I believe that this actually can be used in conjunction and is one of the reasons why in my adversary classes, in my dagger classes, we don't go to throws. It is my personal belief that what Fiore does is he sets you up, and this is just for anything that's out there. I mean, and this is Fiore, but I mean, ultimately, in general, uh, this is something that you'll see with a lot of hand-to-hand. -hand. You lock up the arms in some form or fashion right here, right? And that the throw actually exacerbates the break and the bind. Um, when you're talking about dealing with people that are having these things right here, going to just enough is important. So that's a big piece I want to make sure. So if you're trying this or anything like this here, if you're in another school, understand, I'm not saying the throws are not real, not at all. Uh, that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we have to understand that how, when you, when you have someone's arm in a very nasty situation, if you throw them and you don't know how to throw them safely, you are probably going to make that arm um, significantly less functional for the rest of their life. Please don't do that. Um, and that's why I say this today, because we are talking about the throw. So again, off of first master covers, the image that we're gonna see here, again, I, I cover up in this way, I'm bringing this down, and the image shows, as you'll see, essentially this right here. I'm coming across, my leg is behind their leg, this will be simulating uh, Vincent's leg right here, this far. I'm like this right here, and I'm just turning into that throw. This is no different than we talked about in the very beginning of our Brazari going posta longa, wrapping and turning, posta longa, and then turning into uh, using pot, uh, pot, uh, uh, volta stabile into uh, porta di ferro, and that is a throw. That's a hip toss, it's a hip, whatever you want to talk about. It. So in dagger, it's the same thing. We've covered, and again, we have to create space. So if this is the, if this is his, if this is their lead leg coming at me here, if I'm on the inside, it's not going to work. This is why I think all of his daggers up here, in some form or fashion, is coming in, and we're getting ourselves this space right here, so this avenue, so that this leg can come over, and that by striking over this way right here, I retain the wrist, I start to turn it. So we're starting to see that first the first play of first master in this right here. I'm turning this, why? Because ultimately if I walk in, I just stab myself. It's a bad day for me, right? So in this case, I'm turning this away, up and out. This is already starting to turn and torque the arm. So it's straightening this out. It's incredibly dangerous. Here, turning and torquing this out. Arm is straightening out here. And this right here gives me the avenue right between their shoulder and the leg, where I can come in, pull, and from that, turn and throw. I'm not gonna throw Vincent. Um, 
anatomically it's not built the same way so it doesn't work the same way here for a lot of that type of stuff here but for in general it's just to get an idea of purpose in take that first cover grab and grab the wrist turning it up and over i have the avenue here i'm going to utilize that passari to go in so I'm passing into the inside of the leg while bringing up this right here in my opinion is a strike it is striking the throat it is striking the face it's striking the nose it's anything to make this throw make their body tense and make the throw go over easier um, throwing is easier when they're when an opponent's body is flexed if it's loose uh, it's, it's, it's significantly heavier to throw. So coming in here, turning down, and remember, we have our strikes from the very beginning. So if they're not complying, strike, strike. I'm opening this up right here. Maybe they've turned away with this. I grab the wrist, I pop in, boom, I hit this, and then this is coming over to the side right here. And like I said, that's a, the leg's a little bit higher, obviously, with the human being, but this is what I have for right now. Why is this right here very important to understand that um, is because the setup of what makes this effective is largely due to the fact that we are contorting this, the, the, the assailant's arm, if you will, uh, in a way that makes the arm completely and totally uh, not able to move in certain directions, uh, which means that they are literally at the mercy of gravity and unless they can flip themselves over and do something right here, that arm is going to dislocate and they're probably going to break their wrist, if uh, uh, their elbow, uh, and, and potentially their wrist. Um, it's a really nasty thing. And you don't, and that's what I'm saying, is it does not have to go very far because of the arm being in that position. Them coming up and over, downward to this right here, that locks and breaks into a different position. Okay? So that's the big thing about this. Now, like I said a little while ago, we're not just talking about for this right here in one situation. Already you've seen how I've talked about how first master cover, grab, I'm turning down here, they don't want to go, strike the eyes, break the elbow, and now I can go in, right? This also may come into a place where if you've done the ligadura, or that middle bind, right? So I'm sitting in here, I'm making it in position, I've covered in here, I've struck, I'm bringing, the, I'm bringing the dagger down, I'm hooking. From here, there's still enough space, and this is worse because their arm is now locked into this position. I'm here, come across, and now I have all of my body coming across, which is going to pop and snap all of that arm. Okay? So even though the image may show grabbing and turning over with the hand extended right here, Again, I don't think that that's. I don't think that that is the only thing that's out there. I think that this right here, once again, you're starting to see the sequence of things that are happening. Even if this person decides, and that's why when you see within the uh, the, the middle bind section, if you'll notice, the guy's got the dagger on his foot. It's like he's stepping on it. The guy's like, go of it. I'm not done with you. You attacked me. You're going over. These are some of the things right here that happens within a really serious, nasty fight or an assassination attempt, which may have been the case in Fury's time. So again, big thing about this is you're creating the space. This is just utilizing the Abrazari technique that, we, that was talked about um, in the very beginning of this, uh, of, of, of this series in regards to how we can create that space, which is this is trip up. And that is just going across and through here. So in this case, cross, turning it down. Remember, first play of opera is very important. Snap. Snap. I want this body here at my mercy. It doesn't matter. If this is hyperextended here, your hand is not a chainsaw. It's not going to break through the arm. It may break it, which then in this case right here, since I've broken it, now I have bound on them. I've bound on them, and then I'm throwing them to the ground. Thank you so much for tuning in for that right there. Again, I hope this is people found this information uh, this information uh, interesting, uh, as well as giving more of a perspective on as far as the works of Fiore. Again, this is not anything new here. This is how I see certain things within his manuscript, and one of the reasons why it is it is it's such a dangerous practice to, to get into because it's it's so incredibly effective. 
uh, because it's not just about trying to muscle through the thing, it is about making somebody break to your will. And that's a very important part, I think, to what Fiore is saying here. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty nasty. So with that being the case here, uh, understand that these, these first plays that we've discussed um, these past couple of weeks, to me are, again, him going back to that, that same picture of the fourth of the five things we have to do against somebody. And here we are giving right off the bat the things that are necessary to do this. Now, some people may be asking the question right now, is like, well, if I get myself, well, if you do first master dagger, they're not being thrown to the ground. I think that's, I think this would have been understood. If I grab in the arm and I pull on somebody, that is pulling them, and they're, if, they, if they don't follow, they're gonna break their arm. Uh, and when they do follow, they still may break their arm. Um, in either case, they're gonna be going towards the ground or in a position that is much more, dom much more easier for, that, that, for you to uh, defend yourself, to, to take away the dagger. All these are the things that Fiore tells us to do. And remember, context people, Context. Uh, this was written potentially for a man that, uh, I'm sorry, not, no, this was written for a man that was, for all intents and purposes, really afraid of his life in many, in many ways. And, and that right there is a huge fact that we have to keep in our mind right here. Again, not talking about utilizing this for a self-defense case uh, uh, capability in the modern era. Knives are different now. Situations, carry law, etc. There's everything's, everything's a little bit different. The body works the same. But context is key. Remember, this is not a self-defense course. This is me looking at Fiore's works and uh, applying what I know from my own training into what I think he's saying. And I'm sure there's plenty of other people doing that. So with that being the case here, uh, that's going to wrap up the video. Uh, again, if you've enjoyed this content, please uh, hit that like, uh, hit, hit that thumbs up right there. Let me know I'm doing a good job out there. Leave a comment below. And if you have people out there, maybe share with a friend. I, I, I'm trying to uh, have this channel grow even more, make more people uh, see about what this is. Maybe people get interested as far as what Fiore is and what Fiore is not. Um, and that comes from comments, considerations, and more people looking at this together. So uh, with that being the case here, as always, everybody, I hope everyone's safe out there. Until I see you next time, be safe, train well, and fight on.